conditions. Other things are up too, as I mentioned before, like industrial accidents have shot way up. So, you know, a lot of things are doing really good, uh, but some things aren't doing so good, namely the pampered Western workers with their luxurious lifestyles. Uh, the Wall Street Journal, having hailed the welcome development of transcendent importance in 1992, noticed another one just a few weeks ago. Uh, they said that in 1993, uh, the change in unit labor costs finally reached zero. There's always inflation, remember. Finally reached zero, and that stayed there since 1993. Well, that's another welcome development of transcendent importance. In fact, total labor costs last year were lower than any year since 1981. Uh, headline reads, economic gains fail to increase benefits wages, which kind of understates it. So what are we supposed to do in the face of all of this? Well, we get some information from the press, too. Uh, so yesterday's New York Times had a front page story uh, with explaining how you got to react to all this stuff. Uh, headline was, New, uh, it um, quoted an expert as saying, New York is simply not wealthy enough to, for, to afford services to the general population. Uh, the expert was uh, a J.P. Morgan executive. J.P. Morgan is fifth among the banks in the, uh, uh, in the 500 listing, doing rather nicely. So New York isn't wealthy enough. In fact, the country is flooded with capital. You know, it's super wealthy. But it's not wealthy enough for services to the general population because you've got to increase that the, those stunning, dazzling, stupendous profit levels that are shooting way up for like a few percent of the population. Uh, so therefore, you have the Pataki budget and the Giuliani budget and the rest of them. Cut taxes for the rich. Uh, if you look at the back pages of the New York Times, you'll notice that they mentioned that all the tax cuts are for the benefit of business. All the tax cuts are for the benefit of business. So you cut taxes for the rich. Uh, meanwhile, you increase taxes for everyone else. But here comes some advice to uh, those of you who want to get into the commissar class. Uh, you don't call them taxes. You call them something else. Here's what you call them. You, I'm quoting from the Times. You call them multi-million dollar reductions in subsidies to the city's mass transit system and cuts in aid to education and higher education. Well, you know, you guys are MIC students. You can figure out what that means. Uh, when you cut what they call subsidies to mass transportation and to, and to city, the city schools, uh, you're increasing taxes to the people who pay for those things. That's what it amounts to. You don't call it a tax, but of course it's a tax. Uh, when the subway fares go up beyond their already astronomical level, as they do when you cut these so-called subsidies, meaning paying for services for people, using taxpayer pun funds for the purposes of people. That's called a subsidy. Uh, when you cut those subsidies, uh, the uh, rates go up, the tuition rates go up for the city schools, and somebody pays those rates, namely poor people. So it's a tax, it's not called a tax, and a highly regressive tax. It's a good kind of tax, a tax that slams the poor. You know meaning most of the population, so that's the right kind. The rich guys who ride in the limousines, they want to make sure that everybody's in the subways so they can get through New York traffic, uh, but they don't want to have to pay for it. They want somebody else to pay for it, namely the school children who now no longer get uh, free, uh, un reduced rates for rides to, uh, on the subways. Well, but you don't call that a tax, remember. You've got to understand how these words work. And this goes across the board. Uh, social policy is geared with precision, delicate precision. Uh, to have these deliberate effects. Uh, so take the idea of forcing welfare recipients to work. Uh, in fact, you, welfare programs in the United States are way below any other country. It's one of the most miserly countries in the world in that, largely because we have weak unions. It correlates pretty well. And what there was has declined radically. AFDC, the one they talk about, has declined about 50% since 1970 with devastating effects on families and children and so on, as you'd imagine. Uh, but it has to go down more. Uh, and uh, the people on it, the wel welfare mothers, they have to be driven to the workforce. There's an interesting assumption there, which nobody seems to challenge, and that is they're not working. Like if you're raising children, that's not work, right? 
like your husband loses his job and you go out, you got to go out to the workforce because you're not working when you're raising children. That just comes free, like everything women do. Uh, real work is the kind of stuff that you get paid for. Remember, we live in a meritocracy. That's another thing we're taught. You live in a meritocracy and you measure the merit of work by the amount of income that accrues to it. So real work is the kind of stuff that you do when you're in Wall Street speculating against currencies to drive down growth rates and, and wages. That's real work, and you can tell from the fact that in our meritocracy, you get very high pay for it. On the other hand, raising children, let's say, that's not even work at all. You don't got to pay a cent for that. In fact, you got to be driven into the workforce, uh, which has the extra side benefit that, as everybody knows, when these people who aren't doing any work, just taking care of children, when they're driven into the workforce, uh, they're going to have to have subsidized jobs because there aren't any jobs around. Uh, which means taxpayer subsidized jobs at very low wages, which has the nice side effect of undermining union wages. So everybody's wages go down at taxpayer expense. Well, that's another part of social policy. Very nicely designed, you know, not very brilliant because it's obvious to f figure it out pretty obviously, but that's the way it's working. And in fact, sometimes they even come clean, like the mayor of New York the other day, Mayor Giuliani, came clean finally and, uh, and said exactly whatever I knew he was up to and the whole policy is up to, namely drive poor people out of New York City. Uh, he said it finally, thanks. Uh, it's pretty obvious before, but the idea is that J New York City is for J.P. Morgan executives, you know, the experts who tell you we're not wealthy enough to uh, pay for people. Uh, and the mayor was kind enough to say it, and the New York Times even had a nice headline about it. Uh, they said, welfare cuts provide a chance to leave, you know. So it's all tough love, you know. I mean, finally, we're going to free up these poor people so they're not stuck here. We're going to give them a chance to leave by cutting rents and uh, uh, wages and, the, you know, money for heating your house and feeding your kids and so on. So finally, you're liberated thanks to tough love. Uh, of course, there's no tough love for Cobb County, Georgia, where Newt Gingrich comes from, or in a way there is, they're getting a $72 billion uh, uh, boondoggle to build F-22s to defend ourselves from countries to whom we're sell selling F-16s, for which we're also paying, uh, because they might turn on us and so on. So that's another part of the system. His, that's why he gets more federal subsidies than any suburban county in the country outside the federal system. Well, that's the free market. Uh, I mentioned before that the attacks on the uh, on labor during the Reagan years were criminal as they were. I guess there's not really time to talk about this, so I won't go into it. It's true, but it's misleading uh, because, in fact, there has been a huge attack ever since the, Wa the Wagner Act. The Wagner Act drove business per cirque. They thought they had the country by the throat. Uh, Wilson, Woodrow Wilson's Red Scare smashed up the unions, you know, threw the leading union leader, Eugene Debs, into jail uh, for daring to raise some questions about the Second World War as a free country, remember. Uh, the uh, 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 in, independent thought, you know, independent action, labor movement was completely smashed. Looked like business really had everything under control. Then along came the Depression, and you had labor organizing and activism and so on and so forth. And finally along came the Wagner Act, which brought to the United States uh, uh, the tech theoretical, the, the law, the, the benefits that were part of it had been achieved in Europe about half a century before. In fact, U.S. labor history is extremely violent, incomparably more so than uh, Europe. What you saw there is nothing. I can remember seeing th much worse things when I was a kid and growing up in Philadelphia. And before that, it was hundreds of workers who were getting murdered by the security forces. This went on in the late 1930s. Uh, nothing like it in Europe. In fact, the right-wing European press was appalled by the treatment of American workers right through the early part of the century. This is a business-run society, and it shows. Uh, in 1935, the Wagner Act was passed, finally. Uh, business went out of their minds. Uh, the uh, National Association of Manufacturers literature warned about what they called the hazard-facing industrialists uh, due to the uh, rising political power of the masses, uh, unless we redirect their thinking, uh, we're going to be headed to adversity. 
They started right off with a big campaign, you know, scientific methods of strike 